Good morning, evening, or afternoon, whenever this video finds you. I hope it finds you well. My name is Matthew Webb, and I'm a project engineer for Run Business Solutions. The purpose of this video today is to demonstrate to you how OneDrive and SharePoint work, as well as explain how these technologies work so you have a better understanding of how you can use these tools in your daily life. By the end of it, I hope you'll be ready to go and you'll have a better understanding of the whole picture and it'll just make your life easier. Let's get started. So OneDrive. OneDrive is a cloud storage solution, just like Dropbox or Google Drive. The main difference is that it's a Microsoft product. So it's gonna integrate with your file explorer and it's gonna integrate with your Office apps like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. The flexibility this is gonna give you is, one, it's gonna be backups of all your stuff. So if anything were to happen to your computer, be it an accident or a theft, your files are backed up and we don't have to worry about losing them. You're also gonna get the ability to collaborate with Teams by sharing files, and you can access to version history. So you can modify documents if you're working in a team, or maybe you just need to revert something back that you did. SharePoint is different. Uh, SharePoint is actually the backend technology that powers OneDrive. So you can think of this like the engine on how it works, but you won't really interact with it unless you're using it for a business or an organization. This is gonna allow us to create something similar to a mapped network drive where we create what's called a SharePoint site. And that SharePoint site is then added to your computer and your Microsoft Teams so that you can work with those files remotely. We'll have a demo here where we'll cover that shortly. Okay, so we've got a computer here, just a Windows 10 computer. This is a brand new one. And first off, we wanna check to see if we're signed into OneDrive. So OneDrive is typically the little blue icon right here in your taskbar. So sometimes it's not always right here with all your other icons, sometimes it's in this little arrow. But if it's signed in and working, you'll just have a blue cloud. If you're not signed in, it'll be grayed out or it'll have a slash through it. You can just open that right up and sign right in. Once you get signed in, you'll have a OneDrive line item right here in your file explorer. And through this, you'll see that your desktop documents and pictures folders are backed up. So you can access these through the web version, through the mobile app, or on another computer. This is all gonna happen automatically. You really won't have to worry about uh, keeping track of your files, making sure they're backed up because you'll have these nice little status icons that'll explain to you how these all work. So the blue cloud icon is going to be explaining to you that you have access to the file, it's available, but it's not cached or downloaded onto your computer locally. Now, most cases, if you have an empty folder or maybe you've purposely freed up some space, that it's gonna show that icon. The green check mark is gonna be the opposite. So this means that the file or the folder is downloaded onto your computer and cached. So you can work on this offline or online, but it's gonna be available to you much faster. If we have files that are not necessarily on our computer, so take for example this PowerPoint right here. We have all these other files available to us, uh, but sometimes when you're starting out new with this, you'll notice that most of your files are gonna have this cloud icon and it works just the same. You can double click on this and it'll open it right up. So next we'll cover SharePoint sites. So a quick disclaimer, whenever we configure SharePoint for you, Microsoft says it can take up to eight hours for a policy or a change to a policy to take effect. So let's say, I don't know, you, we make a new user account for somebody you just hired and it's not showing up immediately on their computer. There's a quick remedy for this other than waiting for eight hours, and that's through Microsoft Teams. In Teams, we have the groups, or Teams calls them Teams, but within these groups, we can access our files here, and you can see all these resources are available to us through Microsoft Teams, and we can fully edit, modify, work with these files within the Teams app. But that's not always the preferable way to do things, especially for me, I prefer to just work with the files directly. And so you can come up here and you can click the sync icon. And I'm already getting this error because I'm already syncing this folder, but you'll get this notification that it's gonna sync the file or folder. Clear that away. 
what you'll see is we have this item right here. So the folder we just synced is available to us right here. Now you'll probably, it'll look different for you. This is just a testing for demonstration. Those are the files that were available to us in Teams. Through that, we can also get the same status icons, such as it's cached on our computer or it's not cached on our computer. Next, we'll cover file sharing. File sharing works a little differently in OneDrive versus SharePoint sites. SharePoint sites allow us to tweak the security setting. If you have a SharePoint site, for example, maybe HR or intellectual property, I don't know, we'll obviously lock down those folders so that you can't share them because that's just a good idea and a best practice. But with your personal OneDrive, it can usually work a little differently. So let's say, I don't know, any kind of situation you can think of that's applicable, but let's just say for this example, I have a project that I'm collaborating on with another company or maybe another firm, and I need to send them some files. We can right click a file and then we can hit share. And we get a menu that comes up, a little wizard. In this wizard, we can specify who we wanna share things with. If you already have somebody in your contacts list or within your organization, you can type in their name directly here and it'll populate. If they're external, you'll wanna put in their email address and they'll get an email with the invite to this file or folder. You can also attach a message if you'd like to give them a heads up or say something here. It's important to know that down here, it says anyone with a link can edit. But if we click on this, we can see we've got some options available to us to clean this up a bit. If we generate a link to share with anyone, that link is permanent. It never goes away. I don't recommend this. What I would recommend is for you to think about who you're sharing these files with. If you're sharing a file with somebody that's already in your business, you can use this option right here and just specify their name. They'll get notified and it'll get sent to them right away. People with existing access, this is gonna be for a team or a secretary or someone that can access your files on your behalf. This will be good for them. People you choose is gonna be very specific, very granular, but it doesn't give you the flexibility of doing anyone. You can see in the more settings menu down here, we can specify some options. We can say the people we choose can be full-blown CRUD or create, read, update, delete. They can just review or they can just view. If we want to give those certain permissions, do we want to block them from downloading this file or do we not? If we go back up to anyone, we can see we have these same options and we have some new options. We can specify an expiration date for when this link will be invalidated and it'll no longer work. I highly recommend if you're sharing files with anybody external to your organization that you do this. Set a timeline for maybe 15 to 30 days or maybe 60 days, but just make sure to have this enabled if you're sharing with anybody outside your company. You can also set a password. Similar to some of these others, you can block or allow downloads. Next, we'll cover version history in Microsoft Office. I'm gonna make a new document. You can see the status is immediately synced and then it uploaded to OneDrive. Let's say this is our original draft. You know, we correct our typos. Notice autosave for any OneDrive backed up folder or SharePoint site is gonna be enabled by default. So you don't have to worry about saving all the time. So let's say we go back, you know, we did our work on the thing and then we told the team to make changes. And let's say we skip forward a couple days and the team has gone in and they've added a bunch of gibberish that we don't need in the report or it needs revised. What we can do is we can go into info and we can go into version history here. Version history is gonna show us exactly what changes were made. We can go in here and we can say, you know, here's the original version. Now it's important to note, it opens it up as a separate file here. We need to either compare the two between each other right here or we can just go back and export the file as a different file and make our changes that way. It's up to you to figure out how to best do this. There's no straightforward best practice. My advice would be if you revert changes, export that as a separate document and then work with your team to make sure that it gets finalized. And that wraps up this video. If you found any of this helpful, please leave us a like or a comment so we know that it's actually helpful. 
If you'd like for us to implement this for your business, visit us at run.biz, our website, or give us a call at 806-322-2150. Thanks. Have a wonderful day.